I'm assisting a, a venture capital group uh, called uh, Pulse 63, 63 for the Philippine area code. Uh, it was started by, by an Indian fellow, and it's based in the Philippines, and he only invests in healthcare uh, startups. And so I said, let me see your startups. He had about 30 companies under his roof. The one that caught my eye was the claim system. It's a very simple solution. Uh, all it did was it learned the rules of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. But he didn't know how to sell it to the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. So I, I basically became their biz dev guy, advisor, right? And I said, look, I think I can help you generate revenue from your product, right? And let me structure it this way. I structured it whereby PhilHealth uh, uses the platform as their claims platform, their management platform system. So all claims of the Philippines, all claims of every provider that Philippine health insurance, the national insurer of the country, they spend about 200 billion pesos or 200 billion uh, Indian rupees year on year. So every claim coming in will be checked at the provider site. So before they send it out electronically or physically, it's checked by AI, PDF files, images, data of the, what we'll call it procedure, the billings are all scanned PDF and they're easily just sped into, a, into your laptop cloud-based, our AI Swift claims ensures that every uh, so-called line item is met for the claim. They make sure that the claim is within the standards of Phil Health, that it is covered and what percent is covered so that the billing is correct. Uh, do we cover 30% of a heart surgery? Do we cover 20% of dialysis, et cetera? And we also make sure that that person exists so we do some fraud fraud checks too. We make sure that the person exists. He was at the emergency ward on February 14 with you know with a hernia or something. So all that metadata is also integrated into the claim system. So it's still growing. We're still expanding the the fraudulent uh, technology like ID cards. We're implementing an ID card outside of the cloud because clouds can get hacked. So we're putting resident data on an ID card that will be with the patient. That way there's no hacking, right? We know that this person still has medical data secured in his ID card. Uh, so yeah, that claim system, what it's doing here, it's reducing 99% of all return to hospital claims. As you know, hospital claims is they submit it, then it gets returned if there's one mistake, right? This system, reduces 99% of the return claims. So the big problem in the Philippines is it was taking so long for hospitals and providers to get their money back. 90 days would be the fastest. Some hospitals would wait two years, one and a half years, because it would never be correct. And then it would get buried, right? Every cycle is a 90-day cycle, mind you. If it returns to the hospital, it's a 90-day cycle. So we reduced that 90-day cycle to 15 days. And I asked Phil Health, What's, why, why 15 days? We can do it within the day. Well, the banking system takes a week, week and a half. <laughs> so so we're, we're working on the banking system so that they can uh, automate the banking approval and wiring of funds into provider accounts. So that's what, that's what the SWIFT claims is. And it's huge because it's nationwide. Uh, we hope to charge between two to three percent of the claims, so there's no cost to the government. We take it out of the claims uh, proceeds. It's a big project. Uh, I call it simply Project Twenty Eight Point Eight. So Twenty Eight Point Eight basically is a sustainable primary care solution to ensure our 28.8 million public school children will get their annual checkup, will be able to get primary care 24 seven in their home village. The school, as you know, in many rural areas is the center of the village. It is the voting center. It is the playground. 
it is where people uh, gather. So we felt that we can put the clinics, or we call live clinics, or LabX live clinics, slash digital clinics, in these schools. The clinic is my creation. It is a clinic in a box. It's a, a digital clinic. It has for complete diagnostics. So we can do complete CBC using AI imaging. So AI is implemented in the diagnostics. So one drop of blood goes into a reader. It takes a picture. That picture is sent to the cloud. We can provide the whole 20 parameter uh, CBC read on that, especially platelets. The hard part was my platelets. I, found, I finally found a manufacturer in Brazil that made an AI enabled reader, or we call it digital microscope, to be able to read platelet count. And the big problem in our country, like in India, is we have dengue, dengue virus. The dengue virus fever is rampant in the Philippines and the children are most affected. And platelet count is the number one diagnostic, not counting, not, not doing a tourniquet, looking for white dots. Uh, the best is platelet count to monitor the health of the child. So that was our first AI uh, diagnostic tool. We added additional diagnostic tools for x-ray. But x-ray, I can't afford putting an x-ray in every, every school. So our plans for the x-ray will be a mobile, mobile uh, x-ray lab, which will be again enabled by AI on the radiology side. So we, we enable the x-rays. The x-rays will do uh, one shot of the lungs, basically, to look for tuberculosis. So we we are using AI for tuberculosis diagnosis to ensure accurate reads because we can't send a radiologist at point of care. We're using uh, Starlink. <laughs> so our, our mobile uh, clinics have Starlink. That data is sent. AI reads it. It sends high risk, low risk, uh, et cetera, back to the teacher or administrator for the child. So that's what we've implemented. So the project is is in its infancy. We're still in the 100,000, not 1 million range. But hopefully with the approval of DepEd, we can go into the million every month, every quarter, increased by 2, 3 million children. Because we do need the secretary's assistance because we have to register. It has to be a one command control, right? He has to make a statement saying, okay, all schools in the Philippines sign up with Tom. AI is not a disruptor, it's good medicine. I believe health is one large sector where AI will enable and improve tenfold, hundredfold, a thousandfold, right? Twinning from twinning to genetics to new medicines. It's just going through the roof to ensuring that every patient can be monitored personally, now can be done cost-effectively and be done affordably. So yes, AI is good medicine. Data is most important in this new medicine and large countries like India. That's why we signed up with the Apollo Group. They have good data, which enables better AIs to be developed, better clinical AIs to be developed. I can't say it's a disruptor. I mentioned disruptors because, you know, these startups, they jump on board with this new technology, right? Electricity changed, right? It did not destroy. Electricity changed the way of living. It did not destroy. It improved the way of living when it came. It didn't take out anything else. We didn't have candles. Candles was not disrupted by electricity or oil lamps. That's not a disruption. It was a replacement, a bettering of lights. So we didn't change light, we improved light. AI is not a disruptor because it's improving almost every aspect of our lives. How we educate ourselves, how we communicate, how we write, how we do our work, how we heal ourselves, and one day how we feed ourselves, right? AI is like electricity because it enables, it improves. And that's what I, I made the difference. It's not a disruptor. By year five from now, we would probably have sequenced many, many humans around the world. And that data, match it with specific clinical data. So combining genetic data and clinical data will be tremendous in the healthcare space. It will provide so many cures going forward. Cancer will be probably cured because of AI. Many other comorbidity diseases will be a disease of the past. This is what I see with medical AI. It's used in genetics. It's used in the huge clinical data of each and every human being and at the cost where it's affordable for everyone. This is 
the game changer I see. Now we see genetics being used for medicines, but tomorrow it will be used for healing. We will know what's happening. Our goal now is to reduce the cost genetic sequencing because right now we're about $300 cost for a human being. I'm involved with that because I do liquid biopsy. So we're doing liquid biopsy using AI. And this is, we call the product called Cancer Find. So Cancer Find does a very early detection of cancer cells within your blood. It uses other data to ensure that it is predictive, high risk, low risk, etc. That's what we see. The future of AI and genetics and clinical data for me is how you say star in this whole path forward. But I know that electricity, besides electrifying many humans, it saved more humans at a point in time. So I believe AI will be more good than bad.